to me tonight is really all about Jordan Love. Excited for <laughs> Packers Lions. It's in Lambeau. It's Jordan Love's second start, like as the starting quarterback in Lambeau Field. And last week, Perloff probably like couldn't have gone worse for him through the first three quarters and then better for him in the fourth quarter. 18 unanswered yeah. points. Jordan Love ends up coming back against the New Orleans Saints. It ties the biggest comeback in the history of the Packers, so over 100 years of history, and Jordan Love does this basically in his home debut. And I think that it probably was a bit of a sigh of relief for Packer fans. And now here he gets this big stage all to themselves. This is the only game on tonight, obviously. And the other part of this I think is worth noting is because of Aaron Rodgers' unfortunate injury, you don't have Packer fans who are peeking over at what's going on with the Jets every week and maybe even subconsciously measuring love against Rodgers. He really gets the stage here. Yeah. Can he build on what happened in week three? Well, I got to tell you, be careful. Because I'm a Jordan Love guy. I'm a Jordan Love fan. But first of all, his weapons are terrible. Well, I it looks like I, Christian Watson's coming back and Aaron and Jones is coming back. Probably Aaron Jones. Christian Watson, I saw Jordan Love put one right between his numbers in preseason. And what did Christian Watson do? Drop it. He is soft. I'm not sold. I'm not sold on that guy at all. Honestly, Love Love has not looked as good as I had hoped he'd look. And the funny thing is, I they know. could easily be one and two if Dennis Allen could coach at all for New Orleans. They'd be one and two, and Jordan Love would have a fifty percent completion percentage, and people would be panicking. So I don't think people are looking at the whole picture of Jordan Love. He was twenty two for forty four last week. This this offense is definitely a work in progress. And I think this expectation, you know, you mentioned Aaron Rodgers. You're not saying this, but I think people are like, oh, you know, Brett Favre won three MVPs. Aaron Rodgers won four. Jordan Love's going to be an MVP-type quarterback. Like, we shouldn't be talking about that for him. We should be talking about him. He's a, a, a young quarterback trying to learn in the NFL. Trust me, he's not there yet. He's a lot greener than I think people think. He's good. But we, we're we not seeing Aaron Rodgers' DNA. We're, it's not yeah. like an Aaron Rodgers facsimile at all. So I hope people tuning in tonight realize that he's closer to Justin Fields right now than he is to Aaron Rodgers. Numbers-wise, unfortunately, yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. And he does well, have a little bit more of a built-in excuse, I think, because weapons have been gone. His left tackle his has been gone. His whole team has been gone. Okay. Exactly, yeah. But here's the thing about Jordan Love. Yeah, this is, this is a big moment because... You're right. It doesn't look like Rodgers. It doesn't look like it could be on that trajectory right. where you get back-to-back-to-back to back to back Hall of Famers. That was going to be crazy anyway if that had ever happened. But this is a chance for Jordan Love, I think, to show that the organization chose right, that the organization was smart in what they did, which is not squeeze every last little bit out of Aaron Rodgers, but to finally give over to this youth movement. Totally. Now, I'll say one more thing. Jordan Love's been sitting behind Aaron Rodgers for three seasons, uh -huh. right? I thought it would look better out of the gate because this isn't like you're a rookie Is who's it? coming into yeah. the NFL. You actually have had these moments. You've gotten in some game action. You should have chemistry with these guys. You should look much better than 53% completion yeah, percentage team, through three games. I, that's not fair, though, because his team is young or injured or there's nothing around him. I, I think... Honestly, I don't think tonight should be a big game on Jordan Love. I don't think anybody should be judging Jordan Love after tonight. I think good luck. <laughs> I think the team is super young and building something. Like I honestly, I don't think this is a year for Green Bay. I think it'd be great if he won. It'd be great if he looked good. But don't don't discount his future just based on this year. I mean, Aaron Jones might play, but he's probably not going to be a hundred percent. This receiving core is still super super young. Okay, his but tight Paul end is young. Everybody's young, and the offensive line is always injured. So. Don't don't judge him after tonight. That's all I'm saying. Okay, but here's the thing. This should be a playoff team in the NFC. Why? Why should because they be a playoff team? Look what, at their defense. Look at Rashawn Gary and what they, he did. Look oh, you can't be that defense is that Aaron Rodgers for five pick. years and won nothing. I mean I know. It, it's about time though that this was gonna be the defense was gonna be like more of the identity of the team. Defense, the run game. Do we think LaFleur is a good coach? I mean, I thought he coached a pretty good game in the fourth quarter, was pretty smart with some of the calls he was making as part of that comeback. Now, did they get very lucky that Derek Carr got knocked out of the game by Rashawn Gary, and then basically in the next two series or whatever, they get two massive uh, pass interference calls that really help set up the touchdown? Two different I mean, look at look at his targets. Uh, even without Watson, like, they have basically Romeo Dobbs is a kid. 
Jaden Reed is a kid. Luke Musgraves, a kid. I mean, this is a young, young team. And I think in the past, we would look at a team and say, wow, they're really young. <laughs> let's, let, let's let them build into something. Since it's the Packers, since it's Green Bay, since it's Lambeau, we expect them to be this special team. I, I don't no, think, I think it's because Jordan no Love's pressure. been sitting there. Yeah, I, 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 I totally see what you're saying, but I don't think you can judge him on that until he sort of gets a really good team around him. Okay. I mean, Aaron wanted out of that out of that roster badly. He's like, I don't want to be here. Well, that's because, according to Aaron, the Jets came in and beat them, and he was like, oh, boy, that's a defense that I would like to play with, whatever. So here's the thing, though. We judge other quarterbacks after their third year. We judge them if they don't make a jump, especially first-rounders. We judge them if they don't make a jump from year one to year two. And then we really judge the hell out of them if they don't make a jump from year two to year three. Well, come on. You can't judge Jordan Love. He's been on the bench. I think I think you. It's fair to expect more from him. Well, and again, no, he's, he's all, coming he's off played, of he's, he's played co- fine. He's coming off of a really great moment, which is the yeah. comeback in front of the home no, crowd. He's been totally fine. He's been adequate, but there there's going to be probably some lumps with this team because they're really really. I mean, Bakhtiari's holding on by a thread. David Bakhtiari, yeah. their left tackle. There's a reason so, Rodgers didn't demand that Bakhtiari come to they, the Jets. Right. They've right. been a playoff team for the better part of how many decades now. This is a rebuild. So that's what I'm saying. Jordan Love has a rebuild around him. So I think to judge him based on his his helmet and the fact that he's uh, basically following up from Rodgers and Favre is unfair. Like, this is a rebuilding team. I'm not judging him because I think he should be Rodgers or Favre. I'm judging that you got to sit behind. You get something that I know was probably looked at by him as a negative, which is, oh, my God, I'm buried on the depth chart behind a Hall of Famer. But in some ways, it's like a blessing in disguise because we see guys get thrown into NFL action as rookies, and they're so not ready. And it can derail their careers. And he's at the total opposite. He gets all this time to sit there and be seasoned. And I don't no, know. But, but, forgive yeah, me but, for not thinking it should look a little better. But here's the thing. Uh, Rodgers had, he was sort of Devontae Adams. Where's the Devontae Adams in this formula? Jordan Love, I think they're looking at this team and they're trying to build a team organically. Sort yeah. of, that'll be a two or three year project. I think the, the early wins, the fact that they're two and one is a little deceiving. I think this is a really a rebuilding team. You know what? They might win games because you have a great point about their defense. They have first-round picks everywhere. But, and Rashawn Gary's finally healthy. So they have a lot of great players on defense. I don't know. I I think Jordan Love throws such a beautiful pass. I like watching him. I just don't think he's going to be an MVP candidate and look like he's figured it out. uh, And he's 24. He came in the league young. 24. I mean, we're watching college football guys on Saturday who are two years older than him. How old is Sam Hartman? Is he 26 or something? Yeah. I think Sam Hartman coached Jordan Love. uh, (laughs) He's a babysitter. (laughs) He's a babysitter for Jordan Love. No. Hartman's 24. Uh, On a separate note, I did see a picture today that Bo Nix at Auburn played against Justin Herbert at Oregon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, We talked about that the other day. It's so so ridiculous to me. Yeah. And Herbert's in his fourth year. Yes. And that, that was the exact example that I used when I said, this is why I don't believe people when they say Caleb Williams or Shador Sanders or whoever is going to forego the NFL to go back to college because of NIL. Jordan Justin Herbert started the clock on his NFL career and yeah. now is making $200 million. Wait, wait, wait. But that, I actually was thinking about you saying that. Yeah. Only 40 to 50% of the top 10 picks get that deal. Yeah, but you don't More think that Caleb often, Williams is a guy who thinks he's going to get that? He might think he is, but listen, you don't think Zach Wilson and, and Trey Lance and Justin Fields and Mac Jones, uh, the last big draft, four out of the five guys are not going to get that second contract. Shador Sanders and Caleb Williams are going to make $12 million next year compared to, go, say they're the number five pick, that's like $6 million. It's a big, it's a totally different game. It's now. a different math, but nothing is going to compare. No NIL is going to compare to the second NFL contract. How, but what, how many guys get that contract? Only nine or 10 in the league. I don't know. For the most part, I feel like teams are kind of giving them out at like a 50% clip because, you know, for every, yeah, uh, yeah Kyler yeah. Murray's and Carson Wentz's and guys who get these big paydays, even though they turn out to not be great. Well, uh, book's still out on uh, Kyler Murray. Jerry's still out. But, for Carson Wentz, I mean, he ended up getting paid. Yeah, that's true. But you I mean, Carson Wentz had first. kind of had two or three MVP like years. He had some big time success. Where I don't know, it's not that easy. <laughs> I was just thinking. Actually, yeah. I was thinking about your take. I'm like, you know what, Shador Sanders? Like, he might go number seven to some terrible team. He might go to the Bears. Like, there's no second contract when that team drafts you. Well, the Bears would be a different story. <laughs> yeah. <That's> where, <laughs> yes. Sam. So just real quick, back to Jordan Love, and you guys obviously brought up the comparison between him and Aaron Rodgers. But like, a good barometer would be what did Rodgers do in his first year yep. after backing up Brett Favre for three years? 
So you kind of have a similar expectation for Jordan Love. Rodgers was the 24th pick. Love was the 26th pick. They both sat for three years behind Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers' first year, 6-10, and 10, but 28 touchdowns to 13 picks. Now, right now, we don't know what the record's going to be, but Love has seven touchdowns yeah. and one pick. The big difference is he's completing 53% of his passes, but as of right now, he seems like he's on a similar trajectory with that first year with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he gets an extra game, too, don't forget. Yeah, so at the end of the day, like... You know, how much is the expectation really going to be for Jordan Love? If he has a nice, you know, year with touchdowns versus picks and is, and, and they go, you know, 500 or so, or maybe if they're even above 500, has he surpassed what Aaron Rodgers did in his first year in Green Bay? Or is there even more or less hope for Jordan Love after that? Okay, but it's a great comparison, but I think you also have to zoom out a little bit. Look at what's going on with the NFC North. I mean, you have the Vikings sitting there at 0-3. You've got the Bears... I mean, does dumpster fire even begin to describe what's going on in Chicago? That's kind to be calling that a total outright failure so far. And then you're looking at the Lions, who've really been a mixed bag. And I realize this because I've been betting on the Lions a little too much. <laughs> um, they really have, I mean, awesome way to start off the season. You beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead, amazing. Then they lose the next game to Seattle in overtime. Then they rebound with a good defensive performance against Atlanta. It's just been a lot. I totally see what you're saying. Like, they could sneak into the playoffs. But I think it's a different scenario than when Rodgers came in in 2007. First of all, no one knew about this Green Bay legacy chain thing. Right. Because it's far, grown, far to go for Don Mikowski. So there was, like, everyone's like, well, if you're a Packers quarterback, you have to be a Hall of Famer. Also, 2007, the hype was not the same. And the NFL, right now, week four weeks in, Jordan Love should have figured out everything and be a superstar quarterback. Are you kidding me? Four weeks, he's two weeks overdue. He's based, <laughs> like, I just think that the hype now is so different. Nobody had expectations for Rodgers like that. 